A mere trifle. Pathetic. Amateurish. Those are the thoughts crossing the demon's mind at the sight of such a display of protective sigils. Intricate and layered as the barrier might be, to him the puzzle couldn't be plainer or more obvious. In other words, boring. And his expression displays that fact. Blue eyes, gleaming like the purest sapphires, are half closed, as the heavy eyelids fall like shutters, reflecting the utter disdain he feels for the flawed creation. Not a challenge. A speed bump. Humans. Monotone are his words as well as his face, though at the same time there's an unnaturally sweet melody to his tone, as if his vocal cords had the acoustics of a majestic cathedral. Pride was and still is his greatest sin, of course. Yet who are the prideful in hell, if not the powerful? In this accursed realm where might makes right, pride is a luxury few can afford, yet one he has to spare. The demon's head slowly turns, causing his silky golden hair to slide off his shoulders and down his back, caressing his immaculate, pure white suit. His face remains the same, unamused, neutral, dull. Weren't it for his sombre air and grimness, the demon's beauty would shine above all, for creation hadn't seen a semblance bearing such perfection since the dawn of time. His overall features are slightly effeminate, and a tad androgynous, but every single characteristic of his visage appears taken straight from the very concepts of allure, of the very canons of grace and charm ingrained in our most primitive instincts. There you are. Following a heavy sigh, his hand, open, slowly raises, and the snap of his fingers succeeds the gentle flick of his wrist. The massive mystical barrier comes unravelling, as one sigil after another fizzles out of existence in a cascade failure, toppling like a house of cards, or more accurately, blown away by the inexorable storm standing before it, like a shining beacon dressed in pearly white. Not angelic. Not demonic. No. He shakes his head, unamused yet slightly annoyed. Humans couldn't possibly come up with this. No. How can there be something he doesn't know about? He dismissed the mere idea as unthinkable, barely worth a pause besides the stray thought of curiosity. His attention is now focused on the next obstacle. Past the former arcane bulwark lies a very real and physical barrier of smooth matte grey and uniform material. This is as close as any demon has come to the impregnable walls of the citadel. Meters thick of reinforced concrete, layered with steel plate and composite armour, protect the paladins inside from even the most destructive powers imaginable. Unfortunately for him, he falls outside that particular category. It takes but a gentle touch, his palm setting on the cool stone, like a lover caressing his deer. It's faint, but for a second, an avid onlooker could notice a slight smile of satisfaction on the demon's face. There's no pomp or fanfare, no grand rumbling or grand display of power bearing destruction. There is no collapse, no noise aside from the whistling wind. Instead, there's dust, cradled away by the same breeze, slowly fading into the air until all that's left is one perfectly round hole, as if machine board, or more accurately, as if it's always been there as part of the original structure. Rather than the usual surge of excitement following the overcoming of a trial most would experience, Disappointment is the main feeling coursing through him. How crude. And this is what held my legions at bay for so long. Incompetent, bumbling fools. Of course, the citadel goes beyond a mere wall. Humanity's bastion in the very bowels of hell sticks like a sore thumb on the ravaged landscape. 
The massive monolithic structure can almost be described as a holy temple. One dedicated to the worship of warfare, that is. Built as the epitome of fortresses, the paladin stronghold puts the Magonaut line to shame, and packs enough artillery to rival entire nations. Yet for some reason, the guns stay silent where once they roar day and night, keeping the vast hordes of hellish abominations away under threat of explosive and gruesome demise. Not that such fact ever dissuaded the cruel taskmasters and merciless overlords from driving their troops to the slaughter with a crack of the whip, hoping to clog those cannons and drown their ceaseless barrage with a relentless tide of meat and blood. Strange that, in the end, their victory never realised in the way they envisioned. It merely happened that one day, the whistling of the shells piercing the air simply stopped, and the crackle that once was a constant reminder of humanity's defiance became a whisper and faded away. Why? they all wondered. A ruse? Ironically enough, when demons once charged recklessly into the deadly curtain of detonations and shrapnel, none dared take a step this time. To them, it made no sense, and that was disconcerting enough to make them pause. Not all of them. The hollow reverberations of his moccasins stomping on the newly created tunnel echoed in the air. By this point he expected a response, any response. By all rights and logic, a battalion of heavily armed paladins in full power armour should be swarming him now. And yet, he walks unimpeded past the wall and into the citadel grounds. All defensive positions have been abandoned. The towers, trenches, bunkers and secondary walls. Every single parapet, hole and firing post. The barracks, the machine gun nests. There's nothing. No sign of the defenders. Even the automated turrets and seaways are offline. Is this how hell wins his battles? By default? Annoyance slowly shimmered into anger. This is not his vision. This is not part of his perfect plan. Slowly, he continues and begins climbing the main staircase leading to doors that have not ever welcomed a single denizen of hell. Massive as they might be, they opened with ease. They are not even closed, nor secured. Inside there's no barricade, no desperate last stand, no hail of bullets to welcome him. He expected to make a grandiose entrance, followed by an overwhelming display of unstoppable force, but instead, only the empty halls and the darkness remained to greet him. Could this be a trap? Another jail? Humans would never sacrifice the gateways, or so he believes. Father, this is not how I wanted our reunion to be. Alone, he continues. He's pictured his victory, his ascension to the gates, in his mind a million times. Not once he envisioned this outcome, yet at this point, does it even matter? Heaven is but a door away. It matters to him. This is an insult. Millennia of machinations, of gathering legions of followers, of accumulating power, hoarding the souls of the sinners. All for what? The madness, the torture, the twisting, it was all for a triumphant victory over humanity, over the hosts of heaven. To him, there is no greater affront than denying him a glorious battle, his inevitable triumph. Beauty is now soured with a frown of displeasure, one he sees reflected on the polished metal of the final door. It's sickening to be forced into such an unbefitting expression. In a fit of anger, he blasts the doors open, tearing the bolts and hinges off the concrete walls and sending them flying, twisted and shredded into the room, causing a strident boom followed by the clattering metal as it bounces off the concrete floor and slams into the reinforced walls at the end of the room. As the dust settles, he's met with a sight he's almost forgotten, the gateway to heaven. 
The vision is followed by the awakening of a sensation he's not felt since creation. Surging from deep within and spreading like wildfire. It is debilitating and compelling. Like that of an addict seeing what he craves the most dangling in front of his eyes, ripe for taking. His hand shakes and slowly he raises it into view to observe. Three parts awestruck and one part irate, as his own limb betrays his iron will. This is the power of heaven, and he's still not even crossed the threshold. Annoyed, he wiggles his fingers as he turns his hand around for full display, then clenches it into a fist, digging his nails into the flesh with enough force that, were he human, it'd draw blood. The pain is enough to drown the torrent of fervour and devotion seeping like poison into his mind, in an attempt to play it back into that of the flock where he belongs. It was open, you know. Or is this how you typically knock? Quite the entrance in any case. The mocking masculine voice arises from one side of the room, and is followed by a set of approaching footsteps. From behind a set of pillars, an obscure figure in dark robes and a hood comes forth and reveals himself. A male in his forties, military type with a clean shave and short hair, and a stern look on his face. Normally he wouldn't bother with the buzzing of such a lowly mosquito, but this one not only dares to stand in his way, but does so alone. Preposterous. I know you. I've seen your darkness. The demon spills the words out his mouth with utter disdain, as if spitting foul, viscous eichel, while his facial expression twists into a spiteful grimace. Well, I am flattered, Morningstar. Slowly, a predatory toothy grin forms on the demon's face, unnaturally wide and far beyond anything a human could hope to emulate. It's a Cheshire smile, and one filled with anticipation. Please, Lucifer would suffice, gatekeeper. Are you all humanity can muster? What a pitiful last line of defence. And I thought pride was my sin. Be a good boy. That sidearm, draw it. Press it against your temple and kill yourself. There's the melodious tone once again. Sweet, soothing. Yet those were not mere words, nor rinsed nor fret, but a holy command, coming from the former angel, twisted and horrendous as it might be, one that would compel most mortals into obedience. Much to Lucifer's dismay, the gatekeeper remained motionless and unfaced, staring back at him as if the last few seconds had never happened, as if Lucifer's words had never reached him. The fallen angel cocks his head and smirks. You had to try. I would be disappointed if you didn't. Yet, is that all the great deceiver can achieve? Lucifer bursts into childish laughter in an almost forced, comical manner. Then he suddenly falls silent as his head slowly tilts to the side, and his grin returns. Bloody harvest of the 97th. Maria, wasn't she? I thought so. The gatekeeper's face twitches, if only slightly. Though brief, this acute Lucifer easily picks up. What a pretty face. Even prettier with my cock between her lips. Everything in hell is my plaything. And if you die here, even the pious mortals are trapped in my domain. But I could be persuaded to return her, if you don't mind the slight use. All you have to do is answer my questions and stand aside. Do we have a deal? Flashing his brightest car dealer smile, Lucifer extends his hand. Though tempting as it might be, the gatekeeper stoically shakes his head brushing the offer aside. You misunderstand, Lucifer. I am not here to stop you. I am humanity's messenger, 
not his protector. It was always my duty to answer. Enraged, the aura around the fallen angel shifts, and likewise, so does the environment around, as if reality itself were warping, or more accurately, overlapping with a different dimension, like a broken record skipping back and forth, or an old television with a faulty antenna. Shadows of a myriad of black wings emerge from Lucifer, and extend to cover the walls they are cast upon, for simultaneously, his face alternates between the pure beauty of an angel, and the terrifying snarling visage of a horned, toothy monstrosity bearing a broken halo, shattered to pieces that now orbit around those horns, like a planet's rings. Pathetic vermin. You dare condescend me in my own domain. Humans still don't know their place. You are still pawns of heaven and ants under my boot. You were created as a vanity project with no other purpose but to love your creator. And not even that you can do right. I'll give you a new purpose. Kneel. The vile horse cacophony of an echoing unholy chorus presses deeply on the entire stance as if gravity had intensified a hundredfold, causing the entire room to shake and creak under the strain. The gatekeeper, a mere human, cannot hope to overcome the power of the Morning Star, not even with his training in the arcane, and yields, bending the knee with a pained grunt and gritting his teeth, not to give Lucifer the satisfaction of begging. As the situation returns to normal, Lucifer, back to his usual beauty, puffs heavily and runs his hand over his head, rearranging his golden flowing hair. He smiles again, but this time it is a cocky smirk of superiority and satisfaction. I must admit that even ants can be entertaining from time to time, and simultaneously so fickle. One needs a magnifying glass to observe them correctly, but doing so ends up burning them to a crisp. Now, where were we? Ah! Lucifer lifts his index and wiggles it around. You're about to tell me the meaning of all this. Have the paladins finally given up on their holy crusade? Are you finally tired of suckling my dad's cock? The gatekeeper can't help but chuckle though the pain still lingers, and so does the damage of Lucifer's previous stunt. A wet cough interrupts the mild laughter, followed by a gurgle and a glob of blood spat out of the gatekeeper's mouth. Slowly, he raises his head and locks eyes with the fallen angel. He's dead. Lucifer pauses mid-breath as the news reaches his ears. His face turns into a puzzle of emotions, with anger and disbelief both plastered on his expression in equal measure. Blasphemous little cunt, I. Lucifer advances with eyes full of fury, hand risen, as if to discipline a misbehaving child. Congratulations. You killed the old man. You got your revenge, and you didn't even know it. Lucifer halts. For once, the great deceiver... A master manipulator is at a loss for words, perhaps for the first time in millennia. The fallen angel now recoils, taking a step back. His facial expression twitches, unable to decide for which emotion to settle. Is this how you celebrate your victory? Although, it's not your victory, isn't it? He killed himself because of you, eons ago after casting you to hell. Noble until the end, right? He thought that with him gone, there will be no more discord, no more source of strife. Ah, but I forgot to answer your question. Do you wish to know where our main force is located? Nonchalantly, the gatekeeper points with his thumb at the gateway to heaven. Lucifer's eyes widen at the revelation that he still doesn't believe a single word. 
The deceiver cannot be lied to, or so he thinks. This is a trap, a trick to get him to cross the portal. They are working with his father to jail him again. They are all waiting at the other side, ready to jump him. Angels, paladins, and the Almighty himself. It's a trap. It's a trap. It's a trap. The words floated in his mind, repeating like a mantra. Yet Lucifer still moves forward as if compelled to do so. The fallen angel brushes the gatekeeper aside without uttering a word, or giving him a second glance, gently, without force, simply meaning to pass. The demon's movements are hesitant, slow and fearful. He is afraid that the gatekeeper might be lying, but terrified that he might be telling the truth. Lucifer needs to see it with his own eyes, no matter the outcome. The portal is as bright and blinding as the sun, a circle of pure white light, the closer you are to it. For a mortal to get too close or even cross it, without the adequate magical charms, it is spelled doom and demise, but Lucifer, he's crossed it before, many times during his service to heaven, and one last time as he fell. His hand extends to caress the event horizon. The sensation is warm and welcoming and is calling for him. It takes but one step, and it's over. Lucifer's eyes remain closed as he enters his father's domain, his former home, something that once meant everything to him. The sensation is familiar, so soothing and comfortable, one that wraps around one's soul like a blanket, but something is not right. As Lucifer's eyes open, what they witness is not the heaven he remembered, but a charred battlefield littered with corpses of both angels and humans. The pearly gates have been breached, torn asunder, and everything around it has been utterly smouldered or turned to glass. Ash and smoke fill the air, alongside something else, a lingering energy, foul and destructive. In the distance, he spots one of the mightiest and largest angels giving battle. Is one of the Seraphim, a being of pure energy, of fiery wings, and insurmountable power, and one Lucifer knows well. Agiol. For the incarnation of wisdom to engage in combat is not something Lucifer remembers since his rebellion. In the distance, the Seraph smites the enemy mechanized battalion with beams of pure light and balls of scorching fire but her attacks do not remain unchallenged for long. A pair of guided missiles search from below, thundering in the direction of the mighty creature and striking her in the flanks, detonating with a tremendous force far beyond that of any conventional explosive. The conflagration itself is unnatural and reverberates all across the battlefield to the point Lucifer, miles away from the conflict, feels the debilitating and nauseating effects. Agiel wails in pain with a high-pitched scream, as her flaming wings are slowly extinguished, and she's forced to land, where she's met with the intense pounding of tank cannons and artillery, until her cries are muffled under the barrage of explosions. No. What is this? It can't be. It had to be done, Lucifer. Behind the fallen angel, the gatekeeper stands, staring at him with pity in his eyes. Lucifer is at a loss for the first time in eons, and does not know how to reply or what to do. All his plans have unraveled before him in a matter of minutes. Millennia of his grand design have been for naught. All his effort, all his cunning, had led him exactly where he wanted, back to heaven, ready to change the order but the outcome was something he could have never predicted, all because he considered humans to be beneath him. Slowly, silently, he turns to the gatekeeper for answers. His face is practically begging at this point. They were planning to bring him back, sacrificing all of creation, an artificial god composed of all the souls, past and present. We had to stop them. I see. 